My name is Ed Brink. I'm the Division Manager for Training and Technical Support. Today we want to talk about how to measure external static pressure on a furnace and the importance of measuring external static pressure on a furnace. The external static pressure is the rating at which the blower has to overcome all the resistance in the ductwork, including grills, registers, ductwork, and um, diffusers. It's one of the most important readings that you could take on a furnace to verify airflow and it's one of the most simplest ones that you could take also. So in order for us to take the readings, we need to be able to get access to the return side of the blower assembly and the supply side of the blower assembly. So in this module, we've already drilled in a hole into the return section of the blower. We drill the hole into the discharge side of the furnace, making sure that we're above the baffle plate inside the furnace so that we can get a good positive reading. So what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna turn the unit on, we're gonna run it in the cooling mode. We've disabled the condensing unit because we don't need the condenser running for this particular test. And we're gonna measure the external static pressure, verify that we're moving enough airflow for this particular furnace. We have a 60,000 BTU furnace with a two and a half ton condensing unit. So we should be moving somewhere in the neighborhood of 875 CFM the maximum external static pressure, which means the maximum pressure that that blower can run against is 0.8 inches. So if we're above 0.8 inches, that means that we have too much resistance in our ductwork. It could be dirty filters, it could be bad supply registers, it could be bad ductwork, it could be a restricted return. So we're gonna go through the process of verifying fan speed, external static pressure, and seeing if we can dial in the CFM. So we're gonna turn the unit on in the cooling mode. Again, knowing that we have the condensing unit disabled, we're gonna get our unit is on medium high. Once the unit takes off and runs, we wanna measure the suction side of the fan and the discharge side of the fan with the dual port manometer. So we're gonna turn the manometer on. Make sure it's zeroed. We're gonna take the negative pressure of our blower the positive of our blower, and we're gonna read the pressure differential. So on this particular furnace, we're running at a maximum external static pressure or a maximum force that that blower is working against of 1.2 inches. This well exceeds the static capability of this blower, which tells us right from the get-go that we have ductwork issues and airflow issues. In order for us to be able to dial in the 875 CFM that we need for this particular furnace, on medium high, we have to be at a static pressure of 0.78 inches. Previously, we tried to adjust the fan speed by going to a higher setting. And what that did is it increases the static pressure at which that fan was running against. So automatically, we know we have a ductwork issue. There's no sense of going up in fan speed because we're already over static on our furnace. So what we need to do now is find out where our system problem lies. It's either gonna be a return issue or it's gonna be a supply issue. If we go back and look at the pressure on the positive side or the negative side of the fan, we're running at 0.3 inches of negative on the suction. Typically, if ductwork is designed properly, the static pressure reading on the return should not be greater than 0.1 inches. We check our pressure on the discharge side of the fan we're at 0.91 inches of external static pressure, which well exceeds the total capability of the fan in itself. So in this particular example, we have a restricted supply and we have a um, restricted return. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove this grate to see if we can reduce the static pressure. reduce the resistance that that motor is working under and see if we can get within the acceptable range for this particular motor, which is 0.8 inches. So we removed our supply grill and our static pressure has dropped down to basically one inch, just right around one inch. So we, we've eliminated enough, a little bit of pressure, but not a lot. We're still running at negative 0.3 on the return side. 
And we've dropped down now after things have balanced out 0.69 on the supply side. So we're still at a negative pressure of 0.3 on the return. We've dropped our supply static pressure down to 0.69. We're still over static by about two tenths. So in this particular case, we're gonna look at the filter also. I'm gonna pull the filter out. And as you can see, it's restricted, it's dirty. And we're gonna recheck the static pressure reading. So our static pressure on the return went from 0.3 only down to 0.2. So we picked up one tenth of um, pressure by removing the filter. We're still slightly on the high end for the return, but our total external static pressure right now with the filter removed and the um, register removed is 0.73. 0.73, if the furnace or the blower is running at a static pressure of 0.73 at medium high, we're moving 875 CFM of air. The problem with this is, is the fact that one, we need a filter in the system. Two, we know that we have a restricted um, supply and we also still know we have a restricted return. If this was in a home, the process would be no different. And if your blower is working against a greater static pressure than what it's rated for, you can't move the required amount of CFM. So again, in order to check CFM within a furnace in the cooling mode, it's extremely simple. You find out what fan speeds are set for, you put the unit in air conditioning mode, disable the condenser. Again, there will be some difference between a wet coil and a dry coil, and we're not really concerned about that at this particular point. We wanna measure the suction and supply of the fan by taking a supply pressure reading before the coil. And we wanna take our return reading after the filter or in between the filter and the blower assembly, we want to run our unit and see what our external static pressure is. If we're greater than one tenth negative on the return side, we definitely know that we have a problem with our return ducting. And if we're over 0.5 or 0.6 on the supply side, then we definitely know we have a problem with the supply ductwork. If you have any other questions, please contact your local branch. Thank you.